What's up, YouTube? Submissions here, coming at you with another review today. Uh, so today's review is going to be on the Segeli 150 watt device that I purchased from wetvapes.com. I'll have a link right down the bottom of here for in the description as well. Um, so I purchased this from wetvapes.com for $99. Um, during a promotion that they had for New Year's. Um, they're normally roughly about 105 um, and they can go up to 110, 120 depending on where you find these. eBay, uh, I don't know if I would be really purchasing one of these off of eBay just because it's, I don't know if their clones are uh, being made for this yet or not. Um, but eBay is always... Uh, you know a skeptical thing about that um, there's other companies out there that sell these as well um, that is has a competitive price like uh, elevatevapes.com is in New York wetvapes.com is in New York that's where I purchased this like I said before and those um, seem uh, like a good company to buy it from um, I almost did not purchase this off of wet vapes because in the description it said that it did it said it had an adjustable 510 pin now adjustable 510 pin in a floating 510 pin is a total different separate description adjustable I'm thinking I have to go in there and mess with it um, but I contacted them and they told me that it was a spring-loaded 510 pin so I went ahead and purchased it. Now what's good about wetvapes.com is actually I paid 105 for this. They contacted me and said we're giving you $10 back. I think it was 100 They gave me $10 back. So I paid like $99 for it. I might, maybe I paid 110 originally, something like that. I don't remember. But uh, they gave me $10 back. It was $99 that I paid for it. And yes, let me get into the description of this device. Um, it does come with a cover. Uh, now, people have said before that uh, you know the cover is hard to get on and off. Um, I haven't had really that that problem with it. Um, you just kind of get it from the bottom; it pops off fine. It's a black rubber uh, piece of uh, covering that goes off or off of it. Um, it does have Segeli on the side. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It does say Segeli on that side. And then on the back, it also has www.segeli.com. Uh, I don't really necessarily care for that. It's advertisement. It comes with it. So it makes sense for them to put it on there. But it's so hard for them to... It's so hard because it's black on black. I mean, you really can't even see it. But it comes with that. And here is... I Now, there's one little problem I have with it. I ordered silver. I told them specifically I wanted this silver device, and they sent me the black one. Um, I didn't really want to deal with sending it back and all that, so I just kept it. Whatever, you know, it's, it's color. You know what I mean? It's just that I have a black Canon mod, and I wanted a, a silver one because the silver one looks pretty nice too. But uh, this is the black one. So uh, there's the button. It's a big fat button. It has silver lining on it has that little silver lining. It's it's nice. It's a box mod. It looks like an effing box. Now, there's the uh, the the button. It's a nice button. Um, I've seen there's the the uh, there's the screen on it. Whatever. But I've heard of other people having this button and being like hitting it on the side and then having it get stuck. I haven't had that issue. I mean. I don't really, you know, slide. I've tried to get it stuck. It doesn't, it doesn't get stuck on me. Now this thing, it hits like a beast. I got the Pro RDA on it right now, 24 gauge, 0.3 ohm build. I'm hitting it like 55 watts, uh, 4.0 volts, and I got the chuff top on top of the troll. Now. I, I'm pretty sure it's because of the RDA that I'm using, but it's a very eerie draw. And at the 30 watts and below, like my Canamod and other devices that have 30 watts, it doesn't seem like it hits as good as the other devices during the lower wattages. 
but I'm pretty sure it's because of this troll RDA. It's a very, it's got a lot of holes and it's a very eerie draw. Um, but, uh, so, if I take off, if I take off this RDA, okay, it is a, now there's been another like kind of, uh, arguments and things online about the the contact pin um this is a copper pin brass plated it is a copper brass plated pin it is floating it has the 510 fat daddy connection on there with the four the four slits for your uh i don't know probably your bottom uh airflow addies that need you know venting um but yeah i mean that's nice um the button's very nice i'll show you the button again it's uh it spins a little bit like that but not a problem it's a it's a nice big fat button i love it it's not uncomfortable it's a beautiful pin it's a beautiful button i'm sorry uh it says see it says check atomizer because there's not an atomizer on it um there, now, this is what sold me about getting this over the IP V3. MREN 38 amps, dual 18650, magnetic door. This magnetic door is just beautiful, guys. And the floating 510 is beautiful. Um, I know the 100 watt doesn't have uh, an adjustable 510 pin, but uh, this one does. Now, it took me a little while to get used to the screen, but, um, all right, so I showed you the 510 pin. Let me get in here, get this back on. It's a nice screen. It's got, you probably can't see it on my screen, guys. I'm sorry. I got to deal with what I got, right? 55 watts on the left side. It's got your voltage, four volts on the right side. Percentage of the battery is at 90% right now, and then it has your ohms, 0.3. It's all, it's easily readable. Um, on the bottom, battery venting. It's got a lot of great battery venting on here. Um, it looks nice. Um, your wattage up, your wattage downs. is Those are a little bit tough, especially when you have your, your cover on it. Um, it might be a little bit uh, tough to kind of adjust. Not really tough, but it's a little harder than, say, the Canamod buttons that are uh, pokey out in the little nipples. But I don't like the nipples. It hurts your fingers after a while. I just don't like the feel of having that nipple. I've had it. It was my first Canamod. It was my first box mod that I had. So, I mean, I'm used to it. But if I had the choice now, having this button, and it's the reason why I purchased this over the IPv3, is because of this button. This button is great, guys. It's big. It's round. It doesn't have, it doesn't hurt your fingers. See how it protrudes there just a little bit? Um, it's just a great button. Um, now, the wattages, uh, the screen's nice, but the wattages, um, it adjusts to the, the, to the tenth um, below 50 watts. So you can go 22.1, 0.2, 0 0.3. You hold the button, it goes super high. But once you get up to 50 watts, it goes by one, 51, 52, 53, 54. And so on, etc. Now, if you started at, I don't know, 35.9 and then you went up and it was at 55.9, it's going to go up 56.9, 57.9, 58.9. The only way to go back down and get it on the even numbers is start at like 49, click up, you know, all the way up till it hits 50, and then it'll go up 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, etc. All the way up to 150. I haven't vaped 150 watts. I don't necessarily need to vape 150 watts, but it's good to have it. It's nice to have in case I want to fuck around. The most I've vaped on this is up to 75 watts. And when you have a low sub ohm build in here, like I have with 24 gauge right now in here, the higher you go up on wattages, you're going to get more volts. And that is key because. Um, 
you know, vaping at like, you know, three volts on a 24 gauge dual 0.3 ohm build isn't really, or below three volts isn't really good. And on my Canamod at 30 watts, having a low, low ohm like that, um, you're not really supposed to go below 0.5 on the Canamod, but I tried it and it doesn't really work well and I can see why. It gets really hot fast. This doesn't get hot fast. This thing works great and it does what it says it does. Um, I would suggest getting this over the IPv3 150 watt. Now, I'm, I know, if I'm jumping around guys, I'm jumping around, whatever. I'm trying to give you all the information. So, now I have the battery pack off, uh, the, the magnetic door. So, you can take out your there's a there's like a little ribbon okay that takes out easily it takes one at a time or you can do two at a time depending on how you put this little piece okay so um there is copper connections on the battery okay that's what the inside looks like nice and clean guys nice and clean there is a it's on this side there's like a little uh that little thing in the corner there, right down in that corner, there's like a transformer of some sort. Um, it looks very clean, guys. Very, very clean. Um, what, what else sold me from the IPv3 and this is those connections, those battery connections are copper, okay? They're like nipples. The IPv3 has spring-loaded battery connections and like this okay these little these little springy connections on the ipv3 they're garbage they're janky they're not solid pieces of connections these are like nice nippled kind of like the canamod buttons but they're copper and they're for the battery and i think that's great and they works great now, there's a little bit of an issue getting these batteries into the, not like an issue, but you take your little piece, you get it on the outside, there's plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus. Those are the way you want to put your batteries in there. There is reverse polarity protection on this device, but it's not hard. If you just line it up to the correct way, you're not going to have an issue. So you have to kind of put them in. You kind of have to put them in like straight or else you might have a little bit of an issue getting them in. Like sometimes I I do have a little bit of an issue getting them in. Um, there you go. So you just have to get them like, you just have to get them in straight. Like if you have them at an angle, you try to put them in, they're not going to go in correctly. Then you just take your ribbon, you put it on the other side, you, ma you, you match up the plus minus, and then that goes in. And then you have like this little... You know, leftover lip, which is fine. There's a little lip on the bottom. That little lip there. That goes to the, the down. There's a little lip here. You line it up. And it just pops in. Perfectly in place. The magnets are not too strong and not too loose. They're perfect. I have to tell you, these magnets on here are perfect. Um... I'm pretty sure then five clicks turns it on one two three four five it says Sigeli and then it kind of like goes blank and then you can like hit it again and then it turns up but you can you can still hit it if it's off and you vape it it still hits I mean look at that it's great now I took the batteries out okay it went back to the previous setting that I had it at before I took the batteries out. I think that's great. So you go ahead, you put them in your charger, you charge your, your uh, batteries, you put them back in. It's at the same setting that you were before. I like that because honestly, I just use it with the Troll. And this is my setup. I love it. I love the Troll. A review will be coming on that soon. But I love this setup. This setup's great. It works great. It does what it's supposed to do. And I'm actually really enjoying it. Um... Now, I was going to say something else about, uh, oh, there's no USB 
connections on this, okay? IPv3 has a bunch of fucking holes on their device that you can't use. That's another reason why I didn't get the IPv3. It had like a DC charger on it, but it didn't come with a charger. Is it a 9 volt? Is it a 6 volt? Is it a 12 volt? Like, we don't know which voltage you can use on that IPv3. On this one, it has none. You charge your batteries at a bay, you put them in, you're ready to go. This is dual 18650. I've been vaping it at 50 watts all day, and it's at 90%. I mean, I, I can go two days with this without charging the batteries. Two days. All right? I don't go up to 150 watts. If you go higher in wattage and higher in volts, it's not going to last as long. We all know that. But for my 50 watts, 60 watts, maybe up to 75, but uh, 60 and between 60 and 40, 30 and 60 volts, you get two days easy out of this. Two days easy. Um, I highly suggest this device. It works great. It does what it's supposed to do. I haven't had any issues with it. I've had it for probably, I think I've had it for about a month now, maybe three weeks, and uh, it works great. So let me give you another vape and show how she performs. Chucks. This thing chucks it. I have to admit it. It's great. The 510 loaded pin is phenomenal. All of it has all the pros and none of the cons of the IPv3. That is the point, okay? They're both the same price. You can get them both. They both do the same thing. They're both, you know, the IPv3, I'm not saying it doesn't perform as well as this, but it doesn't have all the bullshit on there that the other one does that you can't use, okay? That's the point. It doesn't have a magnetic back to the to the batteries it's not magnetic you have sex screws so you'd have to do that all the time to take it off take your batteries put it in screw it on i do that on my canamod it's a pain in the ass having an adjustable 510 pin with a screw that you have to do that is a pain in the ass for all you new vapors okay battery safety is key but these do the trick adjustable 510 mag magnetic door i bet you they both perform the same way all right, guys, that's what I have for you on the Segelli 150-watt. Like, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next review.